All right, today we're gonna to talk about the recommendation in the Betaflight 4.2 tuning guides to turn off the ADC filter in OpenTX. If we look at the tuning guides for Betaflight 4.2, we can see two spots in the guide that talks about the ADC filter in OpenTX. First is if we scroll down here to the following suggestions to remove any random wobbles in your HD footage, you can see right here, make sure to turn off the ADC filter or make sure it's not checked in the hardware settings for OpenTX. The next is talking about feedforward stability and how it's greatly dependent on the smoothness of the steps in the RC link. And then again, talks about upgrading to the latest OpenTX version 2.3 or newer, and then disabling the ADC filter. But what is the ADC filter and why are we disabling it? First, when you move your sticks, you would expect to get a nice smooth signal. So for example, if I'm at zero stick here, and then when I start to deflect the stick, say for a roll move, you would think that you would get a signal that looks something like this up to my desired roll rate. Say this is a thousand degrees per second. And this is zero degrees per second down here. And then as I return the stick back to center, I get this nice smooth transition. However, it's a digital signal, so it doesn't work like that. The digital signal has to be broken into chunks, so you actually get a stair step signal, something that looks similar to this. And it's lagged behind the analog input. Now, understanding we have this analog signal, which is this nice smooth line, and then the digitalization of this, we have these frame intervals that we see here. And just using Crossfire for an example, this is 6.67 milliseconds is its average frame rate. One key thing, as I talked about in our previous video, is the consistency of this frame rate. So it's each step is 6.67, whatever it's gonna be. Some protocols, this is nine milliseconds, some it's 12, some 20. The consistency of that step is critical. The other part that's critical is that the reported frame rate in the protocol is the actual frame updates that we see. What's also important to recognize is the analog signal isn't this nice, smooth, perfect signal like this and comes back down. It more looks like this signal here where it's a jittery signal. It, there's a lot of analog noise in there. Even with Hall Effect sensor gimbals, there's still a little just noise in an analog signal. So when it gets digitalized, it's got to determine where that stair step is actually going to land, so on and so forth. So looking at a blow up section of a steady part of the signal where we're just at zero stick and imagine this is the analog signal. Now we're really zoomed in on this scenario. You know, if we're looking at every six milliseconds, you know, does, is the signal here? Is it now down here? Is it now the average here for two samples? Is it now jump up to here? Maybe now the next one, the six milliseconds goes down to here. So you can see this jitter in the analog signal is potentially going to cause jitter in our digital signal as it tries to basically average that out. That's where the ADC filter comes into play. It kind of sets these dead band zones or averages them out so that when you have this jitter in the signal that you don't get the digitalized signal going up and down. It more just comes right through the middle of the signal and it doesn't bounce up and down. So that's definitely a good thing. However, here's the problem with the ADC filter as well. Imagine you have this as your analog signal. And we're really zoomed in here again. It's usually not this much jitter, but I'm trying to exaggerate. So then you set these dead band zones for the ADC filter being on. So these dead band zones go across here just like this. And as you have this digital signal, it works all well. And then it sees, okay, I'm jumping up here. So let's go ahead and jump up. And then up here, now I'm gonna go ahead and jump up. I'm gonna jump up again, and now I'm up at this rate. The issue is this is the sampling frequency from here to here. Let's say this is six milliseconds right here. Milliseconds. You can see again, 6.67 milliseconds is here and here. However, we're getting these larger jumps where as this maybe should have averaged out to here for this next interval, it didn't, it kind of just held steady at this lower rate until it saw the next jump in the dead band and then it jumped up to here. 
And then as, as again, maybe it should have had a, a, a secondary step in here and it didn't do that until it got to the next dead band zone and then jumped up this farther jump. So you get these larger stair steps with the AGC filter on. So imagine this is our stair stepping again with the ADC filter turned off. This is 6.67 milliseconds. However, with the ADC filter turned on, we may get stair steps that look something like this. Let me just erase that right there. So although the transmitter is selling Betaflight that its update rate is 6.6 .6 milliseconds, these stair steps are actually updating every 12 milliseconds, 12 milliseconds, and that is causing larger jumps, whereas this would give a little bit more fidelity and you could see the individual jumps going up through. These larger jumps, since we're filtering at 6.6 .6 millisecond rate, not 12 millisecond rate, that means when your feed forward is going out through here, you're going to get these spikes in feed forward every time you get this jump because it's, again, not prepared for, it's thinking it's a 6.6 .6 millisecond frame rate, but really the data is coming through at a 12 millisecond frame rate. So what we have up on the screen here is two logs. They are the same settings, same feed forward, same RC smoothing, same transmitter, same everything for the settings that are going into the filtering and everything. Uh, this is on a crossfire and you can see the difference. Just looking at the left log, you can see we have the set point, which is the sticks. And this is just the roll. So it's where the sticks are commanding the roll rate to be. You can see right where we're at, it's calling for 20 degrees per second right at the marker here. If I move that marker to this location, it's looking for 86 degrees per second. And then the driver is working with the PID loop to follow that. I don't have all the other traces up. I just have just the set point here and then the feed forward on roll as well. On the right hand side, somewhat of a similar move, you know, we have the sticks up high, coming down low, and then bouncing back up a little bit here. And you can see, again, the set point, and then the feed forward trace for that. Now these are pretty high feed forward mounts with no averaging or anything of that nature. This is just set point interpolation, which is something that this user should definitely uh, try to set. But that, we'll leave that for another video. This was just done in a log review I was helping somebody out with. You can really see here how much smoother the set point is in the with ADC turned off versus with ADC turned on. See how it's more steps, the, there's different steps, and it, the steps are larger like we just talked about uh, on the whiteboard. Whereas here, since the chunks the packets are being sent more frequency it's it's smoother because that update rate is appropriate at the 6.6 .6 milliseconds whereas here you're getting new packets every 6.6 .6 milliseconds but the actual update of the packets is a much larger frame rate which kind of throws everything off downstream all the filtering so on and so forth for feed forward and all that kind of stuff you can see the feed forward differences and and you're getting some um, bouncing back and forth a feed forward here. Again, that's where this user should uh, look at averaging two or averaging three with this instead of just feed forward interpolation setting. However, you can see it's a lot bigger with the ADC filter turned on. If I zoom out to a fuller extent, you can see the difference between the two. You have a lot more feed forward spiking here with the ADC filter turned on versus the ADC filter turned off. The best setup here is to have this ADC filter turned off and then again, if you're getting some spiking here where the sticks aren't moving a whole lot, you want to go into the CLI, type in get FF underscore. And then you want to look at this feed forward interpolation variable. This user has it just set to on. You want to really try average two or average three. If you're an FR Sky user, you want to try average four. And that's even with R9 as well. And that will smooth out any of this little jitter. That's how to get to the best scenario of both worlds where you're getting the quickest sampling rates from OpenTX. So the last question, of course, is how do you turn off the ADC filter? So to adjust our ADC filter, I'm going to use the QX7 here for an example. I'm going to go ahead and hold down my setup button. I'm going to hit page over to page six. Then I can go down here and you can see the ADC filter is right here. If I uncheck that by clicking, obviously, then that shuts it off. Conversely, of course, you can turn it back on at any time by going in and checking the checkbox there again. Okay, well that is it. If you like this video, do make sure to smash that like button. It does really help with the YouTube algorithms and getting the channel to grow. 
If you're really enjoying the content time after time, please do consider joining the Patreon. Thanks again, and I hope this helped. And like, smash that like button, please. Cause then I, if, if you guys get me a billion likes, then I can make videos that are Fortnite. So do you want Fortnite videos or this video? What's better?